Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about snake bite and its management in the emergency room. Snake bite is one of the most important emergency in rural India. We get a lot of uh, snake bite cases, different types of snake bite cases, poisonous snake bite, non-poisonous snake bite, dry bite. Uh, so many different types of snake bite cases we get. Sometimes these patients come after many days with lot of complications. So that type of cases like cellulitis uh, or compartment syndrome, they also come to uh, ER in many areas of rural India. There are four major groups of poisonous snakes are there in India. So we can see here families, different families, Elapidae, Viperidae, Hydrophidae, Crotalidae. So these are the four major groups in that you can see what are the uh, common um, snakes, common cobra or naja naja, great bengaris, uh, russell's viper, uh, debua russelli, saw scaled viper, echis carinatus, sea snake, pit vipers. So these are the common snakes we see in our country. There are other snakes also there, but we mainly come across this type of snake bites or some some snakes are related to this type of snakes. Uh, genetically they are related. So venom is also slightly related to this type of snakes venom. So you can see first four snakes, cobra, crate, russell's viper, saw scaled viper. So these are the big fours in our country. Big four means they produce maximum envenomation in patients. We have antivenom for this major four major group. So these uh, big fours are common cobra, common crate, saw scaled viper, Russell's viper. So they are either uh, neurotoxic or hematotoxic. Other toxicities are mainly uh, they can produce renal failure, uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, cellulitis, all these things. Cobra is mainly neurotoxic. Uh, crate is neurotoxic, but sometimes hematotoxic uh, effects can be there, but it is mainly neurotoxic. Uh, saw scaled viper, it is hematotoxic and renal failure also can be there. Russell's viper, hematotoxic, some neurotoxicity is explained and uh, uh, renal failure also can be there. Now you can see the snakes, different types of snakes here, big fours, cobra, crate, Russell's viper, saw scaled viper. The fifth big one that is hum nosed pit viper. That is like uh, any other viper but the color is different and the venom is also different. The problem with this type of vipers, their venom or toxicity will not respond to anti-snake venom which is available in our country. So anti-snake venom mainly covers the big force cobra, crate, russell viper and saw scaled viper and some uh, poisonous snakes which are related to these families. But humnose pit viper is an entirely different uh, uh, snake. Their venom will not respond to our routinely available anti-snake venom in India. Now, whenever we get a snake bite cases, some uh, prefer to bring the snake to the emergency room. Is it uh, very important to identify the snake or to see the snake before treating uh, the patient uh, in a snake bite victim? You can see here two important types of snakes which is seen in our country. One is common crate, other one is common wolf snake. Common crate and wolf snakes are looking like uh, crate only, but wolf snake is a non-poisonous snake, whereas crate is highly poisonous snake. So even if we see this snake, sometimes uh, an inexperienced uh, doctor in ER may think that it is a poisonous snake, this common wolf snake, but they are non-poisonous snakes. So. If you can uh, uh, make out whether it is a poisonous or non-poisonous, it is well and good. Otherwise, we always treat the patient with 
clinical findings whether it's a poisonous snake bite non poisonous snake bite or dry bite or an actual bite if there is clinical finding we have to treat if there is no clinical finding no need to treat like a common crate bite patient is coming to emergency room we have seen the snake but fortunately there is no clinical finding no need to treat that is because this may be a dry bite so dry bite we no need to treat that is because they don't have any clinical finding during the bite the venom might not have entered to the uh, body or it uh, the snake might not have injected the uh, venom into the body so it is not that important to make out whether it's a, to make out what type of snake has bitten the victim or not it is always important to find out the clinical findings in that patient clinical judgment is very very important now next one is fang marks it is very important to identify the fang marks you can see here there are two spots with bleeding from the spot that is a classical snake bite mark if you see the crate bite that is a very small uh, a needle prick uh, needle prick injury like pattern like they are called as hypodermic needles that means like your insulin uh, needle it will be very very small so you sometimes you may not notice the bite mark at all and whereas cobra bite crate bite and all it is large uh, fangs so you get a Uh, better visible uh, fang mark but is it important uh, to see the fang mark to treat the patient that is very important to diagnose the poisonous snake bite uh, the fang marks are, are very very important but if there is no clinical finding in a patient who is saying clear cut fang marks should be treat that is a question actually if there is no clinical finding no need to treat it can be a poisonous snake bite the bite may be a dry bite so only if there is a clinical finding you have to treat the patient or you have to follow up the patient whether the patient is developing any clinical finding during the hospital stay you have to be very careful but whatever it is if there is a fang mark it is a very very important sign that it it is due to a poisonous snake bite it can be actual poisonous bite or it can be a dry bite a dry bite no need to treat you have to observe the patient closely watch the patient if there is clinical finding you have to treat the patient and spider bite also sometimes can produce very small uh, bite mark but uh, you can see the uh, difference between snake bite and uh, spider bite it is very very small close uh, marks now local findings is it important or not so these findings are very very important whenever you are getting a snake bite what we have to understand is snake during snake bite some external protein is directly injected to our body these external proteins can produce severe reaction in the local site or in the subcutaneous plane or in the lymph nodes so all these local findings are very very important because only poisonous snake bites will produce local swelling uh, redness erythema local lymphadenopathy all these things are uh, clinical feature of poisonous snake bite so uh, you can get fang marks but sometimes you can get dry bite but if you are having a snake bite history and if you have a cellulitis or redness on the uh, area or swelling on that area it is very very important that patient has developed envenomation whether it is local or systemic that has to be made out you can see some non poisonous bites uh, you can see there is no fang mark it is only a bite mark up at the right side photo you can see the bite mark that's all so local findings are very very helpful in uh, diagnosing the poisonous snake now this slide is actually for pre hospital care And there is no need to do so many uh, unwanted things uh, in uh, a snake bite case should not cut you should not put a tonic uh, you should not massage you should not put electric shock uh, all these things are unwanted you have to only immobilize the leg, leg and you have to apply some pressure bandages on the leg so that superficial circulation 
or especially lymphatic circulation is blocked so that venom will not enter to the circulation very fast and you have to make sure that patient is calm and lying down otherwise if the patient is anxious walking around then the venom which is entered to the local area can spread to systemic circulation very fast so make sure that patient is not walking and put a elastic rib bandage or a piece of cloth uh, and put the uh, put it like a uh, compression bandage only for superficial lymphatics it should not be very tight you should be able to put your finger in between the uh, skin and the plaster now this patient should be immediately shifted to uh, a nearby hospital we should not try to do anything there immobilize the body immobilize the limb reassure the victim that uh, the uh, person who is attending the patient or uh, uh, emt or whoever it is they should reassure that uh, the patient will be all right because the anxiety fear all these things increases the heart rate that increases the circulation so that itself can uh, spread the venom very fast throughout the body and avoid any interference with this bite site should not cut you should not put any ointment there nothing you should just transport the patient to a nearest facility where there is asp available now there is an important thing that whether a small bite uh, small snake bites like a uh, adult snake bite the clinical features will be almost same and uh, we are not treating the uh, uh, the size of the snake we are treating we are treating the symptoms of the patient whether it is a large snake or small snake the amount of uh, venom which is injected may be same sometimes and the venom in a small snake may be more concentrated and more dangerous so we have to be very careful we are only treating the clinical findings in a poisonous snake bite not the size of the snake size of the snake Uh, is not at all important here we uh, depending on the clinical scenario only we will treat the patient now when to treat the patient only if there is clinical finding we are going to treat the patient so clinical findings are like this patient we already we have seen the fang marks fang marks will be there in most of the cases but in indian population it is very difficult to get the fang marks even if uh, fang marks are present we will not be treating we'll be treating only if there is a uh, only if there is a clinical finding but if you get see the snake you can identify if possible you can identify the type of snake uh, if you identify it as a poisonous snake bite it will be better but if you don't uh, understand the type of uh, snake uh, that's also okay because many doctors may not be knowing the uh, uh, type of poisonous snakes in different areas so patient can have vomiting abdominal pain local uh, lymph lymphedema then uh, lymphadenopathy bleeding tendency can be there tosis ophthalmoplegia neurological weakness can be there in many patients who is having uh, cobra bite king cobra bite russell's viper myalgia stiffness redness trismus myoglobinuria all type of muscle injuries can be there uh, in sea snake uh, bite renal failure is very very common in uh, viper bite and remember renal failure in hump nose pit viper takes longer time to recover pituitary adrenal insufficiency can be a late complication of snake bite or uh, late means uh, third day or fourth day it is very common in viper bite now whenever we see a patient with snake bite we do at present we do not have any Uh, venom detection kit available in our country so if there is a syndromic approach we will know, will be knowing what type of snake has bitten uh, uh, whether it's a uh, neurotoxic bite hematotoxic bite or some other muscle or kidney injury is occurred so syndromic approach may uh, tell you that uh, possibility of uh, a type of snake has bitten that's all now syndrome one local swelling bleeding disorder it's mostly viper so they may not have neurological finding local swelling bleeding local swelling is very very severe in viper bite whereas in cobra or crate it is not that severe syndrome 2 local swelling bleeding tendency shock renal failure 
then it will be humnose pit viper. Other vipers also can produce renal failure, but the recovery in uh, humnose pit viper is very late. That may be because uh, their venom is not uh, is resistant to protein ASV, whereas other vipers we can treat with ASVs. So here the recovery part is very much delayed. With ptosis, external ophthalmoplegia, facial weakness, you can think about Russell's viper uh, bite. So renal involvement, bleeding tendency with neurological involvement, you have to think about Russell's viper. Syndrome 3, local swelling, ptosis, external ophthalmoplegia, facial weakness, we have to think about cobra, king cobra and sometimes crate also. Syndrome for no local swelling, no fang marks, bitten on land while sleeping, ptosis, external ophthalmoplegia, facial weakness, that is great. One important thing about crate is you may not notice the bite marks in crate bite. That is very, very important. Now, there is a slight difference between cobra venom and uh, crate venom. I will not be going into the details of the uh, chemical analysis of this venom. But what we should understand is cobra venom is rich in postsynaptic neurotoxin called as alpha bengora toxin and cobra toxin. Cobra venom binds especially to ACH receptors, prevent the interaction between ACH and receptors on postsynaptic membrane, result in neuromuscular blockage. So they can have weakness. Crate venom also uh, have similar type of action. Common Indian crate venom contains both presynaptic beta bengorotoxin and alpha bengorotoxin. Irrespective of the type of the crate, its venom is 10 times more lethal than cobra. Cobra attacks are very, very fast and uh, they look uh, very uh, uh, like uh, angry, but the amount of venom they injected are uh, less severe than a uh, crate bite, like same, same like uh, uh, king cobra. Their venom injected, the, uh, the uh, venom uh, is less than a common cobra. Crate is more severe than a cobra bite. It is the venom toxicity is very, very high than a uh, cobra bite. So, crate venom has great affinity towards presynaptic ACH receptor whereas cobra postsynaptic post ACH receptors. So there is a slight difference, whatever it may be, patient can have neurological weakness, many patients may require mechanical ventilation. Now syndrome 5, dark brown, brown urine, renal failure, paralysis, bitten on land, that is Russell's viper. Now this chart will tell you that different types of uh, uh, cobra, uh, different type of uh, snake bites and their clinical findings. So this already explained so I am not going to the details of this chart here. You can refer this chart afterwards. So there are some clues for severe envenomation. Say, snake identified as very dangerous one rapid early extension of local swelling that is very very important if the local swelling is extended very fast then it is a severe bite tenderness of the local lymph nodes especially in the lower limb it is a uh, like uh, inguinal nodes uh, early symptoms uh, of uh, symptoms like uh, hypertension shock nausea vomiting abdominal pain headache heaviness of the eyelids uh, all these things are very important early spontaneous systemic uh, bleeding passage of dark brown black urine that is these are the severe envenomation now once you uh, uh, see this type of signs and once you get a history of a snake bite we always try to do 20 minutes whole blood clotting time or prothrombin time and INR you can see here two fresh uh, uh, glass vessel cells are taken leave undisturbed for 20 minutes 2 ml blood is taken in them if blood is still liquid, not coagulable, that shows hypofibrinogenemia. And if the blood is uh, coagulated, then it is a normal clot formation, then the test can be repeated. So continuously we have to do this test because uh, 
we will not be knowing when the patient is going to develop uh, this type of hypo hypofibrinogenemia or other type of features. So continuously we have to do this 20 minutes whole blood clotting time or you can directly go for PTINR. If it is available in your emergency room, PTINR is far far better than 20 minutes whole blood clotting time. But uh, WHO uh, recommends this 20 minutes whole blood clotting time that is because they are uh, mainly targeting uh, uh, like um, primary care settings and secondary care setting where uh, PTINR mission may not be available always. So this is a very good investigation. Uh, 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 it does not have any cost in that just keep 2 ml of blood for, uh, every uh, 10 minutes so that you uh, and observe for 20 minutes. You can see that the clotting is occurring or not. So don't think that every 20 minutes we have to take blood. The blood can be taken as free uh, like uh, you can even take after 10 minutes. Sometimes uh, the patient may develop uh, first sample may be normal but the second sample after 10 minutes will become abnormal. So we will not be knowing when it will become abnormal. Some uh, doctors prefer to take only during 20 minutes uh, one sample will be taken. After 20 minutes only they will take another sample. But some physicians take uh, uh, one sample now after 10 minutes one more sample. Like that uh, uh, local variations can be there. Other investigations you can see WBC count. Uh, hemoglobin percentage, uh, platelet count, uh, peripheral blood smear, creatine kinase, creatinine, hyperkalemia that all in different types of snake bite these all can be increased or decreased or normal. So we have to do all these things. Very very important investigation in a patient who is saying coagulation defect is prothrombin time, INR, APTT, serum fibrinogen levels. If APTT alone elevated, only one limb of the coagulation um, pathway is damaged. If uh, PTIN are also involved, then two limbs are involved. If fibrinogen levels are low, that indicates disseminated intravascular coagulation. You can see here chart, I am not going to the DIC part. Uh, if uh, both APTT and PTIN are clonked and fibrinogen levels are low, then the whole pathway is involved. It indicates disseminated intravascular coagulation. The importance of this is uh, we have to give cryoprecipitate here. Now, whenever we see a patient who is having snake bite, whether it is a dry bite uh, or actual bite, whatever it is, we have to always look at the airway, breathing, circulation, disability, exposure part. These are very important because in snake bite, patient will be highly anxious and they have tachycardia, they can have hypotension because of the fear, anxiety vasovagal syncope all these things and actual venom itself can produce all these finding patient kind of hypotension shock all these things. So we have to always take care airway breathing circulation. ASV is the only antidote available for snake bite and it should be given only if there is a clinical finding otherwise we should never unnecessarily try anti snake venom. And urgent resuscitation is required in patients who is having uh, hypovolemia, shock, uh, hyperkalemia or uh, renal failure with uh, uh, pulmonary edema, tachycardia with pulmonary edema, all these things we need to resuscitate the patient urgently. So that all depends on the clinical finding of the patient. That's why we always take care of the airway breathing circulation in patients. Now once you diagnose that it is a big force and if the patient is having clinical finding what we explained previously, we have to give ASV. It's a polyvalent uh, anti-snake venom which covers cobra, crate, russell swiper and saw scaled wiper. And some related uh, snake bite uh, poisons also it can neutralize. But hum nose pit wiper it will not cover. There is a problem of hum, hum nose pit wiper. So ASV mainly covers big fours and uh, each vial, can, uh, you can see the uh, neutralizing uh, doses here. Uh, it is available as 10, 10 ml uh, vials. It can Sometimes it can be powder, sometimes it can be uh, liquid form. And ASV is only indicated if there is clinical finding. You can see the clinical finding chart here. Different types of uh, bites, you can get the clinical finding. Even if it is humnose pit viper, we can give ASV, but it may not work like other 
big faults sometimes it may work but normally it will not respond to your asv but we will not be taking any risk uh, if there is a poisonous snake bite if there is a clinical finding we have to definitely give anti snake when there is no test dose recommended for asv we should not waste our time for this it is not an ig mediated but it is a complement mediated so test dose sometimes can produce risk of reaction so we should never give any test dose for asv now prophylactic reg regimes for uh, allergic reaction actually it is not recommended but some physicians give it they give uh, hydrocortisone avil and adrenaline will be ready but uh, this may not uh, prevent uh, allergic reaction some studies have proven that it can prevent some studies have proven that it cannot prevent so normally in routine practice uh, many doctors give it uh, thinking that it may be beneficial but uh, there are no recommendations for uh, prophylactic regime if you want to give prophylactic regime like any other allergy you can give hydrocortisone and avil injections and adrenaline should be ready to uh, give in at any time if the patient develops anaphylaxis now average indian uh, snake bite doses are given in this chart uh, you can see here saw scaled wiper if you diagnose the initial dose will be only 5 vials all other bites it is 10 vials that is very important you can see the chart here how we are coming to that conclusion you can see here no response to asv it is very very difficult uh, it is given in books that uh, so many uh, clinical findings may show that response to asv can be measured initially itself but uh, in clinical practice it will be difficult but in neurotoxic bite you can see definite improvement uh, 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 immediately after giving asv patient improves with uh, his doses his breathing difficulty but whereas hematological uh, uh, this one hematological problem it always take 4 uh, to 6 hours to uh, give a good result because uh, all this coagulation product products uh, produced from liver it take at least 6 hours to maintain its normal level so there we need to have some more time to get proper response but whereas in neurological bite it is very fast you can see the patient is improving with your asv now how long asv can be given normally whatever asv you decide to give whether it is 5 vials 10 vials 20 vials it has to be given as fast as possible because they are going to neutralize the venom once the venom go and attach to the target sites we will not be able to neutralize the venom but in some patients they if they come with uh, continuous symptoms for a prolonged period it can be given up to 2 to 3 weeks but as a normal rule we will not be doing like that a patient coming with snake bite if you find out that it is a poisonous snake bite immediately give asv within uh, first day itself we will we'll have to finish the actual dose whether it is 20 vials or 30 vials we have to finish it more than 30 35 vials are not recommended in any type of snake bite. now if the patient uh, have got a, a patient has got a neurological problem you have to give atropine uh, with neostigmin that is a treatment of choice atropin has to be given before neostigmin to prevent the side effects of uh, neostigmin neostigmin dose is 1.5 to 2 mg im uh, before that we have to give 0.6 mg atropin so that is very important that can reverse some of the uh, neurological problem uh, some uh, bites like cobra bite even if asv is not available this uh, uh, neostigmin with mechanical ventilation we can treat the patient uh, without any problem but whereas in wiper bites uh, uh, we have to correct other factors also now any patients who have shock in snake bite should be treated like any other shock you have to give iv crystalloids noradrenaline hydrocortisone the shock can be due to anaphylaxis to uh, the asv Uh, anti venom reaction vasodilatation cardiotoxicity hypovolemia respiratory failure acute pituitary adrenal insufficiency septicemia so many causes are there for shock but the management is same as any other shock you put iv lines two large bore iv lines iv fluids 30 ml per kg crystalloids 
noradrenaline can be started if the patient does not improve steroid should be started as a third line therapy now supportive therapy if there is uh, elevated ptnr ffp can be given 15 ml per kg if there is low uh, fibrinogen levels less than uh, uh, less than 100 then you can give cryoprecipitate 10 to 15 units of cryoprecipitate for every 2 to 3 units of ffp is sufficient to correct the hemostasis or 1 to 2 bags cryoprecipitate per 10 kg antibiotics are not really recommended in snake bites but in patients who is developing cellulitis after a bite especially in viper bite they may require antibiotic should that should be predominantly an antibiotic which covers the gram positive infection anaerobic infection amoxicillin clavulanic acid will be a good choice no need to start very very high dose of higher antibiotic normal antibiotic will be sufficient dialysis may re- may be required in patient who is having renal failure remember hump nose pit viper may not respond to asv they require longer period of diagnosis longer period of dialysis cytosorb therapy is one of the uh, recent type of uh, uh, therapy which will be done with the help of dialysis machine that removes the toxins in our body so that can be tried in many patients uh, we can try this that improves the uh, problem in uh, snake bite especially viper bite faster than normal course of treatment now fasciotomy is required in patients who is having compartment syndrome uh, you can see severe pain disproportionate pain for swelling that will tell you that the patient is having uh, compartment syndrome this type of pa- patients require uh, fasciotomy you can see the compartment pressure can be monitored by various methods but normally in a routine emergency room uh, primary or secondary care hospital you don't get all these machines so disproportionate pain directly indicates there is a problem in the compartment so compartment syndrome should be suspected now many patients with snake bite can have adrenal hemorrhage uh, pituitary adrenal hemorrhage or pituitary adrenal insufficiency so long term complications are known in patients who is having snake bite especially viper bite you have to follow up them and some may require long term therapy uh, hormone replacement therapy also required in pituitary or adrenal uh, hemorrhage or pituitary adrenal insufficiency so that is also very important you should never forget about this type of long term problems of snake bite so we have discussed about one of the important problem in uh, our country uh, it's a developing country it's a problem in uh, uh, rural areas of india large number of patients can come with snake bite it's our duty to find out whether uh, patient is having clinical findings or not you should not treat any patient only by seeing the snake only by seeing the fang marks only uh, uh, other type of uh, uh, symptoms you have to have solid clinical evidence for uh, snake bite uh, poisoning or lab investigations also very important like some bites you don't see local uh, reaction very fast but ptnr will be elevated faster so you can utilize the lab investigation and you can utilize the clinical findings so clinical findings are very very important Uh, because uh, many bites can be sometimes dry bites so we have to preserve the uh, asv we should not misuse it because uh, the developing asv or manufacturing asv is very very difficult in our country so try to try to not uh, use it without uh, any proper reason if you have a solid clinical diagnosis with solid clinical findings then start asv ASV is the only treatment option for poisonous snake bite in our country polyvalent ASV is available in our country thank you